Did Bonnie Ross save Halo? I'm sure your initial reaction is, the way Halo Infinite is now? No, it's terrible, everything's awful. Well, it seems like she actually kinda did. Uh, this recent Reddit post caught my eye here and talks about how it seems like Microsoft wasn't really into continuing the Halo franchise here and Ross kind of, well, saved the day for us Halo fans here. Saying that Ross recalled that her colleagues felt Halo was a waning property and looked at contracting an outside company to produce new games, but she argued differently as in it should be in-house at Microsoft creating Halo games right here. These are clips taken from various articles, which kind of reiterate saying like, it seems like Microsoft wasn't really into the whole idea, saying Microsoft itself was likely worried about what they would do with Halo at that point, talking about when Bungie left uh, the Halo franchise, saying that it turns out one of the principal options they were considering was going with Borderlands developer Gearbox as an option on taking development of Halo 4. If you guys don't remember, Gearbox, the developers of Borderlands, actually did do the CE port of Combat Evolved, which wasn't exactly the best port of it out, out there possible to play, but at least you were playing Halo on PC. We didn't get that chance again until the MCC, you know, decades later, basically. I was saying that people felt like, let's do another Halo or two, and then call it good with the franchise. That's literally what Ross said right there. And also saying that she wanted to be like the George Lucas of Halo, in a way, which is kind of interesting. So I kind of wanted to get into a discussion about that, seeing like, did Bonnie Ross really actually help out the Halo franchise? But before I go any further, do you guys want a chance to win this bad boy projector right here? Like this is an awesome projector that I recently got from BenQ, and it's freaking sweet. And right now, there's actually a full on Halo Infinite tournament happening with, for this BenQ projector right here. Basically, you go to the website, you fill out your team name and stuff like that, and you're able to win one of these projectors, which is really nice. It's not gonna be just me though. We also have Uber Nick, Real Life Spartan, and Nade God also jumping in with this tournament as well. So we have a few content creators as well jumping in. It will be taking place on July 16th. That's a Saturday, guys. So if you definitely want to get in, jump in, sign up if you can. We've already had a few teams sign up. Basically, you go in, fill out your roster, and then you're good to go. Join in with the Discord server, get a chance to win a free projector, which is a 4K 60 frames per second gaming projector. This thing looks freaking sweet. It plays super well on top of that. You know, these are like $1,500 value when it comes to these projectors. So it's definitely worth something there. And uh, if you guys ever want a chance to like, have a chance to play with your family or something like that, because you know, playing these little small screens when you ever do split screen, honestly, it's not that enjoyable of experience, especially since we have split screen coming to Halo Infinite in season three, you're gonna wanna pick up one of these projectors, guys, if you wanna do some split screen console gameplay. This will actually be amazing for that. Again, that's July 16th, guys, for you to jump in for this BenQ Projector Halo Infinite Tournament. All the information you need to know, guys, is in the pinned comment here. The link right there takes you right to this website. You can sign up and get all the information you need. Well, let's get right back into those details. And I figured we could discuss this while playing some Halo Infinite campaign. So you got some gameplay to watch uh, as well as we dominate the battlefield and discuss whether or not Bonnie Ross really did kind of help out this franchise. Cause at first look, I mean like, yeah, obviously it seems like she did because well, I mean, we're still playing Halo to this day, which is fantastic. I mean, as a Halo fan, I'd be extra, extra sad. Right, if we just like couldn't play Halo anymore and it was just actually like a dead franchise as some maybe people claim it to be. And it looks like our progress right here on the mission is that we just need to kind of go to this last beacon right here. We actually hit like a major checkpoint when it comes to uh, the campaign. So we get some major story action happening with this, which is gonna be sweet. I think we need to call it a loss because we're pretty far away here. And up we go. I absolutely love this campaign, by the way. It just looks so good, feels so Halo, and it's just absolutely, incredible i absolutely love this campaign if you guys ever get tired of the multiplayer and just kind of feeling fatigued on halo try jumping in and play some campaign you'll find yourself really enjoying halo again i mean like look at this view man come on is that not halo so i kind of want to take a look see i think like this whole like feeling that bonnie ross was talking about saying that microsoft was kind of done with halo kind of helps kind of re uh, sure, like with the kind of feeling that we we're having like we keep hearing like this initiative by three four three two uh, you know, have a much more wider audience when it comes to playing Halo, right? Like, not just trying to appease the Halo fans, but really doing something outside of what Halo's used to doing to really, you know, promote it, get more people playing it, because I guess that's probably what Microsoft was kind of pushing 343 to do. 
And like I've been saying in my videos recently as well, that like, it's not just 343 why like things maybe suck or something because it's not because of 343, it's because like that's Microsoft, you know, that's, you know, Microsoft is control, basically, you know, saying yes or no to a lot of the things when you can accomplish with Halo or what they want, what 343 wants to do essentially. I mean, we recently came across this issue right with Halo.API where like they've been developing these tools that like 343 could utilize in their game to have it be a better experience for the players. And apparently according to like Microsoft bureaucracy, it's just not happening that way for whatever reason, which is kind of sad to hear. You know, 343 has always been intended as like an extension of Microsoft and never like a true like standalone developer, even though I'm sure they definitely have like their expertise and their say of like what they want to do with Halo. Oh my God, this is a busy, busy section right here. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, we're getting zapped like crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna jump out of this. This is a little too much. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, we gotta survive this. We got we got ghosts. We have elites. We got skimmers. With like shock rifles zapping me. This is all a bit much right now. Oh gosh. Take this ghost here. To get him out of it. So I think with the sentiment from Microsoft kinda of ties into like why Halo 4 was such a drastically different game and followed a lot of trends that were going on in gaming at the time, right? Wow. So maybe that's why like with the multiplayer of Halo 4, right? It really did feel like you're playing like a Halo version of Call of Duty, basically. Which is something that definitely didn't resonate very well with players. And even Bonnie Ross and 3 4 you know, recognizes this as well. That, you know, they feel like they kind of dropped the ball when it comes to the multiplayer experience for Halo 4, but the campaign, they thought they did a great job. And so then, you know, a lot of people did not like how Halo 4 played out, myself included that you know they kind of you know took a step back a little bit and went a little bit more towards the classic side of things of halo when it comes to even starts at least but even then you know people were still comparing halo to call of duty because at that time when halo 5's launch that big thing was like advanced movement right titanfall and all that kind of stuff and even i remember when i was talking to my co-workers about like halo 5 like back in 2014 being like oh god this game looks so cool and then they were like yeah they're basically just copying advanced warfare from call of duty and putting it into halo and i'm like yeah, I can see that comparison. Yeah, and again, you know, again, following trends, which it seems to be kind of like one of the detriments of Halo is that trying to really try to branch out and follow trends and get that larger audience that was what they were trying to get and just not fully executing it properly. I think we're doing a little better this time with the Wasp, kind of keeping our distance, yet also kind of switching back, laying some damage out these little heat-seeking rockets, which I think we all can kind of just agree, like basically Halo 4 was a really awkward hybrid. It was a great Call of Duty game, <laughs> but uh, I think it's what really was the biggest detriment to Halo 4 was that it played like Halo, but also played like Call of Duty. And a lot of times those two player bases don't exactly uh, blend over super well because the gameplay style is so different. But in Halo 4, basically, you know, it played like Call of Duty, so then the Halo players didn't like it. But then the Call of Duty players didn't like it because it still played like Halo and it was a bit chaotic, you know? So first step of trying to get that broader audience is what I guess we keep hearing, right? With Halo that it needs to expand. We need more people. Probably because that pressure from Microsoft to try to tell you what the hell? That was crazy. <laughs> and then Halo 5, like in the multiplayer, I thought it was actually really great. Went back to even starts, a little bit back to the, somewhat to the roots of what Halo is, but you know, it still didn't feel like a true Halo game, right? And then eventually we got you know, Halo Infinite, which I think it was kind of like 343 finally taking a step towards like, okay, listening to the players and giving the players like really what Halo players what they want out of their Halo game. I mean, look at this environment right here. This is this is not scream like huge combat evolved influence right here. Like this time campaign is amazing, in my opinion. One of the best Halo campaigns we've ever had. And like these Forerunner interiors just look absolutely incredible. Just feeling more classic Halo. Like this Infinite is just like just feels like a continuation from Halo 3. It honestly does feel like that. It's kind of crazy. No, no, no. This... This is a trap. She's trying to find out what I am. Trying to use me to break the deadlock, start the spires. My routines plus the monitors. Not good. Then we stop. Stalemate. For now. She's close. Eventually she'll find a way. Then we have no choice. I've got you. Red flag. Oh god, that's happening. 
Did you say something back there? It was nothing. <laughs> of course, she's like, oh, no, no, I didn't, I didn't say anything. No, nothing at all. Just, you know, just red flag, but no, no big deal. It doesn't mean anything. I just really like the color. I guess continue on. So then, like, with Halo Infinite, you can definitely see that 343 kind of took some steps more towards a classic experience and, like, okay, let's just make, like, a true, like, Halo experience. And you definitely see that with the multiplayer and the camp where I think, think this is the first time 343 has really nailed both properly for the first time. Obviously, uh, you know, the multiplayer is definitely leaving a little bit more to be desired right now. But the core gameplay, everyone agrees, like, it's really good. This is the first time we've ever seen the Halo community at large since Halo 3 agreed that the campaign and game multiplayer gameplay are both really good. All right, looks like we need to head back over to the sequence here to continue on the main mission because we got really about everything else pretty much covered right now. I also would say that I've seen an expansion in pretty much every way possible with Halo as a franchise as a whole, right? Like we've seen more comics, we've seen some more books. Uh, we've, now we've seen a TV show finally come to fruition, uh, which originally was supposed to be a movie back with like Peter Jackson going to be the, the director of the whole thing, but everything just kind of fell apart. But you definitely seen that there's been more Halo stuff being created beyond just the games at this point, which is really cool to see. Though a lot of it's much more for niche audiences. As I say, if you're like a super duper ultimate Halo fan and just cannot wait to consume the next bit of Halo content, then you know, that stuff's getting created for you, which is great. We've seen the Halo TV show already got approved for a second season. I know a lot of people have their opinions when it comes to the Halo TV show, but overall, I did enjoy the show. There were some questionable moments, for, for sure. Uh, but I think, again, it's kind of this broader in audience initiative we keep seeing when it comes to the Halo franchise as a whole. This Banshee trying to get in my way. Oh, yeah, it did. It definitely got in my way. Get out! It just disappeared! <laughs> the page, you see that? The page just completely disappeared. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess we're gonna huff it, guys. We'll see what happens with season two of the Halo TV show. If they'll take f fan feedback into consideration when it comes to uh, the next season. And we'll, you know, it's really sad. We'll see what happens. That's all you really can do. You know, they've lost themselves in a pretty, actually a rather decent state, I think, with the, with, the with that game as well, or the show, I should say, as well. Where I think they can really kind of go in any direction they want to after, after this. They don't really have to like make a next like. They don't really. I don't really feel like they really kind of stuck themselves in a corner with this game. Oh my god, we got oh we got some silent shadow homies in this lot next to the section right here. Can turn cam can camo on me on this. Oh gosh, okay. These shock. Oh my god, I can get it from both sides here. I am playing on heroic by the way, so it's not like the most difficult setting possible. Because I kind of like when I'm playing cam campaigns now. I just kind of chill. I'm gonna challenge myself, you know, I'll definitely, I can't really like chat and challenge myself at the same time. It'd be kind of weird, but no, nope. oh God, there he is, he's camo with the sword. He's camo with the sword. He's, he's camo with the sword. Oh, we gotta back it up. I can barely see this guy. Ooh, sheesh, I was close. I'm just like trying to shoot these sh shadow people. It's so difficult. There we go. Shock grenade saves the day again. This elite has a ravager and a sword, so I gotta keep my distance, but he's camo the whole dang time. I can't see him. Oh, I think we got him. No, we didn't. Oh, he's still alive. Now it's not just dramatic for you guys because it's probably the compression on YouTube's not coming through, but this is actually really difficult to see. Ah! I know I could probably just run away, but like, I'm already this far in, man. I can't just give up now. Oh my god, that was way more difficult than I ever thought it would be. <laughs> oh my gosh, I literally used up like basically all my ammo on that gunfight, but that was fun. Are you friendly? You show up as a red dot. You're not friendly. <laughs> there we go. Another thing actually really cool about this world of Zeta Halo is like it's really just cool just to run around in, you know, and not just like kind of run through everything super quickly. Experience it. It's actually really fun. Love the environments that they created with this game. The enemy types are fun to fight against. Oh yeah, dude, that was great. For the sake of speed, I decided to fast travel to a fob because it's taking too long. You know, if we really want to make things unfair, this arcane sentinel beam absolutely destroys. But kind of like back on topic, what I was saying, like if we've seen the most content possible with Halo on in the last few years, which is awesome to see. Though, at what cost? <laughs> that kind of thing goes. It definitely took us quite a few uh, years to get to where we are right now within the Halo franchise, but I think right now we set ourselves up to do something really awesome with like, Halo Infinite being a live service game. Obviously, the development not really feeling that way, especially with the multiplayer side of things, but I think that's the right move to make with Halo. I think that Halo's always had like this bit of this issue 
when it comes after Halo 3 of what did we do with the gameplay after Halo 3? Because I still feel like Halo 3, it's not, obviously it's not perfect when it comes to the gameplay, but it's about where you'd want it to be for a Halo game. Get in the face! And so I think Halo kind of ran into this dilemma of we want to make another Halo game, but we can't just release like Halo 3 basically mechanics with you know new maps and weapons and stuff like that. If people would be upset at that time, being like, this is not what, you know, why spend another 60 bucks when I could just play Halo 3. But then you don't want to make the game too drastically different because if that's the case, then people wouldn't like the game as much. That's what we happened with Halo 4, essentially. So I think what 343 did is create a really good foundation with Halo Infinite and then build on top of that and have that be the game for the 10 year plan, right? As they, as they mentioned multiple times before. I still think that they will continue on with that said 10 year plan. But I would love to see 343 continue on with Halo Infinite and then just build on top of it. I think that's the exact move to make with this franchise moving forward. It just depends on how 343's execution is, which has been, you know, hit or miss here and there. Like the development with the MCC, fantastic after 2018. Before the initial release, not so much. But the main thing is that still, we're playing Halo still. That's the big thing. And it seemed like, for according to Bonnie Ross, and well, you know, Microsoft in general, that they sound kind of done with the franchise. Oh my god, they dropped hunters on me. Like, you really had to drop hunters on me. Oh my gosh. I got these Berserker Brutes coming at me too. Oh my god, that's getting spicy. I think I have two Berserker Brutes coming at me right now. Ah! There we go. That's one. Dude, why are these brutes so angry? Like, do you have to be this angry all the time? Oh, did he find a route? Did he find a route? Oh, there we go. There we go. Got that berserker brute done. I will say for overall, though, I would actually probably have to agree with the, what if the statements are true from Bonnie Ross and Microsoft that, well, Bonnie Ross saved Halo. Now, did she, basically, she did kind of become the George Lucas of Halo as well, which is kind of what she, her goal was. You know, having this multimedia platform with like toys, comics, the video games. Now we have a show, books and stuff like that. Like there's so many different ways to consume Halo content that we never really had a whole lot of. Like yeah, we had books previously, but it feels like they've doubled down on the publication of books and things like that. Like, hey, we can't die right here. We're like so close. These hunters, man, they definitely are not, they're not your granddad's hunters, man. There we go, had to use a drop wall. Forgot about using the extra bits of equipment in this game. But I guess I want next I wanna pass this question on to you guys. Like, do you feel that Bonnie Ross saved Halo? Given this information, do you feel that Bonnie Ross saved Halo? Would you rather not be playing Halo at all right now? Or are you glad that you're at least you're playing it? Cause it seemed like Microsoft was like trying to call it good after the initial trilogy. It's elite not going down. There we go. Extend that bridge out right there. There we go. God, I love the scale of this game, dude. I, that's one thing that 343 did such an amazing job of, just like the scale of this game. It's something that's been truly been missing with Halo ever since, honestly, ever since 343 took over. Ooh, we got some bad guys coming in. But it's like these large scale arenas that you get to jump in and just blow stuff up and it's, so, it's just so much fun. And like I said, like if you haven't really had a chance to play the campaign since like in the initial launch, do yourself a favor and play it again. You might find yourself actually really enjoying Halo again. Oh god, we got so many just awfully difficult elites coming my way here. I will this. Oh, he had the sword out too. He was about to. He said he's about to finish this. He was not joking. And honestly, guys, like at this point, you know, I think it's safe to say that right now, like, I think Halo is in a good spot to really set itself up to be something special. But right now, I just think at this moment, like especially this year in particular, we're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer, which is sad because 343 has certainly had their time to develop a next Halo game. I mean, <laughs> but they just couldn't quite like land the mark on Halo Infinite, but that we all agree that the base game is fantastic. We can't wait to get more of Halo Infinite compared to previously with like Halo 4 and 5, people were just kind of done with it and didn't want anything to do with it. So did Bonnie Ross save Halo? Yeah. In a way, yeah. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below, guys. Thank you much for watching. If you want to see some more kind of chill commentaries while gameplay, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll catch you all the next time. Peace out.